everything's propaganda. Every time I watch TV, I'm like, gee, can you put another fat black retarded person in this commercial? <laughs> That's the women's bathroom. A man in the women's bathroom. Now that's fucked up. Uh, as to the person, we don't know what homeowner, which homeowner shot at him. Um, I guess they think that they did something wrong, which they did not. If somebody's breaking in your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do, actually. Um, so whoever that was, you're not in trouble. Come see us. We have a gun safety class we put on every other Saturday. And if you take that, you'll shoot a lot better and hopefully you'll save the taxpayers money. Brilliant! Brilliant! And I think it's really important. I represent 50% of this country, whether you like it or not, to be able to have different viewpoints and say, I disagree with that viewpoint, but it's important to hear it is important to our country. What the fuck did you just say? I represent 50% of this country. Bullshit. I'm damn sick of it. You <gasps> never help me what are you going to start helping yeah. Really? Fall back! You don't have to go to hell. You're in hell. This is hell. This is hell. This is hell. Because democracy basically means government by the people, of the people, for the people. But the people are retarded. <laughs> Then strangled them and finally dismembered their bodies. Brent, then do available. And homelessness and all that. And now, the voice you've been waiting for. There is a secret song at the center of the world, and its sound is like razors through flesh. I'm here to turn up the volume. <laughs> retarded this past week was chock full of uplifting stories that inspire optimism just kidding we're completely fucked most of the news from this past week ranges from bad to hilariously stupid with very little good news at the hilariously stupid end of the spectrum for example do you remember that Tennessee cop who got fired because she was banging pretty much the whole fucking police department well, she turned around and sued the city and got half a million dollars because she claimed that she was groomed. This seems like a headline that could be on the Babylon Bee or the Onion, but apparently this is real life. And then also in Tennessee, one of the few examples of semi-good news, the Tennessee Senate this week passed a bill to outlaw chemtrails. This bill, provided that it passes the House and gets signed by the governor, would ban the intentional injection, release, or dispersion by any means of chemicals, chemical compounds, substances, or apparatus within the borders of the state into the atmosphere with the express purpose of affecting temperature, weather, or the intensity of sunlight. And then this article tries to act like they're just banning something that doesn't even exist. Because according to a research group at Harvard University, which focuses on climate science and technology, this is bullshit. The research group has debunked the theory, saying that there is no credible evidence for the existence of chemtrails. Pardon me, but that's bullshit. They're playing the little weaselly word games because they don't call it chemtrails, so they can say chemtrails don't exist, and technically they're not lying, because the actual terminology in use is stratospheric aerosol injection. Even the goddamn former director of the CIA admitted to that shit. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. 
No credible evidence, huh? And then down the road a ways in Arkansas, the executive director of the Bill and Hillary Clinton National Airport got shot in the head after the ATF did one of their 6 a.m. no-knock fucking raids. And I really don't know what to make of this. This guy was apparently a gun enthusiast and would buy and sell firearms at gun shows, which I thought there was a loophole that made that perfectly okay to do. But for some reason, they showed up and knocked down this motherfucker's door and then what do you know, there's a gunfight. The guy probably didn't even realize at first what was happening but from what I understand he got shot in the head and it's questionable as to whether or not he's gonna make it and if you happen to be watching this and you're from or live in Arkansas I'm sorry but that is one place I have no intention of ever visiting and last week I had very briefly mentioned the whole bloodbath controversy. It had been so over-addressed I really didn't want to get much into it. But apparently the media, rather than backing down like they should have, decided to double down. And Google even changed the search results for bloodbath definition, where it used to mention a period of disastrous loss or reversal. A few mutual funds performed well in the general bloodbath of the stock market. And they just decided to pull that out and only leave in the definition referring to a physical violent bloodbath, i.e. a massacre. And the media is just in total denial that they've lost their grip on the American perception of reality. They still seem to think it's 20 years ago when people would just believe any old bullshit that comes out of their mouths. And I'm reminded of that old 2017 clip of Mika Brzezinski. Oh yeah, the bitch! where she stunningly admitted the quiet part out loud. Well, and I think that the dangerous, you know, edges here are that he's trying to undermine the media, We're trying to make up his own facts, and it could be that while unemployment and uh, the, the economy worsens, he could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is, the, that is our you... job. And that really is what these arrogant cocksuckers think their job is, to tell us what to think. And that shit may have flown back when they were the only game in town as far as dissemination of information, but those days are gone. And there was also some new idiotic hilarity that came from President Joey Skidmarks. I know, hard to believe, right? Well, he tweeted out, For homeowners looking for a new place but worried about giving up their lower mortgage rate, I'm proposing a $10,000 tax credit if they sell their starter homes. That means more folks can get into houses that suit their needs, unlocking affordable homes for first-time buyers. Yes, if you're willing to sell your home and take a mortgage on it more than double the rate your last one was, we'll give you $10,000. Never mind that that won't even cover the fucking closing costs on most home sales, let alone the fact that the difference in mortgage rates is going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars over 30 years. But sure, 10 grand? How very generous of you. And if you look at mortgage rates over the past, say, 50 years, people that bought homes in 2020 with a fixed rate got the deal of a lifetime. You'd have to be twice as dumb as shit to even consider this little bargain he's offering. And I know, he's basically functionally brain dead. It probably wasn't even him that tweeted this out. But out of his aides, there wasn't anybody on his team that had enough sense to say, yeah, this probably isn't a good idea. You're gonna come off like one of those old timers that gives a kid a quarter and tells him not to spend it all in one place. But apparently, his whole team is a bunch of fucking retards. Yep, 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 yep. And then there's this continuing saga with the Trump New York fraud case, where in order to appeal it, he's been forced to come up with the $454 million bond, and 30 assurity companies refuse to give him that bond using his properties as collateral. And New York is talking about trying to seize some of these properties, not just the ones in New York, but possibly even Mar-a-Lago. And check out CNN's reporting on this. You need at least 30 days to get any of these properties sold. Um, but the property that you alluded to, Mar-a-Lago, uh, potentially, that could be something that could be sold quickly. I think the valuation is something in the hundreds of millions, and I think there could be a buyer for something like that. And that would be literally, if you're talking about doing that between now and Monday, that's picking up the phone, calling someone, and then literally writing a check. Yeah, I mean, there could be plenty of international people who want to buy that property. I mean, there's properties that are priced at 150 and 200 million that are nearby that. This is a case that hinged on Trump overvaluing his properties and New York saying that Mar-a-Lago was only worth $18 million. But now all of a sudden they're saying, oh, well, he could get hundreds of millions of dollars for Mar-a-Lago, which is basically indirectly admitting that the whole New York case was based on bullshit.
And speaking of bullshit, the House and the Senate passed a new $1.2 trillion spending bill, over a thousand fucking pages, which they gave them all of 30 hours to read before voting. All right, hey guys, I want to make a quick video um, talking to you guys about this minibus. Over a thousand pages of awesomeness right here that I won't be voting on tomorrow. Many conservatives won't be voting on this bill. I'm just going to go ahead and read some of the highlights of this bill for you guys. Uh, I didn't memorize them all, but basically this is going to cost you, the American taxpayer, about $1.65 trillion. This is part two. We voted on the other uh, mini bus uh, last week. Uh, it doesn't secure the border. It funds mass parole. It funds mass asylum. Uh, it subsidizes the gun control lobby, um, funds Biden's Green New Deal, funds all of DEI. There's about 1,400 earmarks in it, and that's just to name a few, guys. It's way too much money. Um, and more importantly, guys, if we ever want to get out of this trajectory of spending this country into the ground, which we absolutely are, we're $34 trillion in debt. We've got about $2 trillion annual deficit every single year. We've got a woke and weaponized government that's turned on the American people in so many different ways. We got to quit doing this crap. And it's just sad because we we have the majority in the House. We should be We should be fighting. We should be doing better than this. This is unacceptable. And you had a lot of Republicans end up voting for this motherfucker because, oh no, if we don't, there might be a partial government shutdown. Oh no! But tell me, was anybody really surprised by this result? Also unsurprising is what just went down at the border on Thursday. Even people that only passively pay attention to the news probably saw the story of how a shit ton of people rushed the fences, knocked them down, and just stormed their way in. But I wonder how many people are aware of what happened in the week preceding this. See, two weeks ago, back on March 11th, you had a guy from Lebanon come across the border at this same border crossing in El Paso, I might add, and he was being treated by medical personnel, I don't know, probably dehydration or something, but while they were treating him, he decided to openly admit that he was coming to the U.S. to make a fucking bomb. That's right, I shit you not. So the first thought is, wow, this guy is the dumbest fucking terrorist in the history of terrorism. Well, the medical personnel alerted Border Patrol, they took him into custody, and while questioning him, he admitted that yes, he is a member of Hezbollah. And this was the next day on the 12th. Then, five days after that, they get confirmation that, oh yeah, he is on the terror watch list. So while on average, they're only holding people for about 72 hours, it takes five fucking days for them to find out, oh yeah, this guy should absolutely not be in the country. And this guy proceeded to tell them that he was actually trying to flee Lebanon and Hezbollah because he didn't want to kill people. So maybe he's not the dumbest fucking terrorist ever. He was just hoping for a way out. But the fact that if he hadn't openly admitted to being a terrorist, he would have been released and in the wind is further proof that the southern border is a major vulnerability right now. And at a time when our country is on the precipice of war on multiple fronts and the whole world knows we've got this massive vulnerability ability, you'd have to be an idiot to think that we're not being set up and the stage isn't purposefully being set for a major fucking event. Think about it. And I seem to remember saying something last week about how now that the Prussian presidential election was over, you might be about to see some provocation. Well, on Friday, the CIA, <clears throat> I mean, some terrorists, attacked a Moscow concert hall, killing and wounding hundreds of people. And you immediately had the Ukraine simps going, oh, look at what Russia did to themselves. And then you had ISIS claiming responsibility, and then Putin comes out and says, nah, we've apprehended four of these dudes, some of them trying to head for the Ukrainian border. And of course, the Ukrainians came out and said, we would never do anything like that. Even though for the past weeks and months, there have been attacks on Belgorod, St. Petersburg, Kursk, and even Moscow. Attacks that were Ukrainian and Ukrainian sympathizers. And of course, the US and NATO is towing that line of, oh, there's no way this was Ukraine, this was definitely ISIS. But anybody that knows about Operation Gladio, knows that since the very beginning of the CIA, they were arming, funding, and controlling all kinds of unsavory terroristic groups all over Europe to try to keep any ground from being gained by, you guessed it, Russia. 
So shit, this might even have been some ISIS guys. But if they were being armed, funded, and directed by Western intelligence groups, you think they would even be aware of that? And the point of all these probing attacks into Russia in the past few months is to try to provoke a retaliation from Russia. And this is exactly what the Ukrainians want. They need Russia to do something drastic so that NATO has an excuse to get more involved. Because they know that if NATO doesn't get directly involved in this conflict, they are fucked. And this is probably why French President Emmanuel Macaroni decided to postpone his visit to Ukraine for the third time in about a month because he knows the Ukrainians have just as much, if not more, of a reason to want him off than the Russians do. If the president of a NATO country gets killed by the Russians, that's the perfect excuse for NATO to get involved. They could just fire a missile at his plane while he's coming in or leaving and say it was the Russians. And he doesn't want to go down in history as Napoleon blown apart. So for all his recent crazy tough guy talk, he's not that fucking stupid. Maybe it's just that he's trying to toughen up his image because of all the recent scuttlebutt over whether or not his wife is actually a man. Which, if there's even a discussion and debate over whether or not your wife is a man, you're already taking a massive L. But lately he's been given all this tough talk about how if Ukraine loses it's going to be an existential threat for France and the rest of Western Europe and how, oh, we, we just might have to send in some fucking French troops to fight on the ground in Ukraine, as if that's a major threat. It's been about a hundred fucking years since your military was a threat to anybody besides a bunch of dirt poor African countries where everybody lives in huts. And lately even those countries are saying we're not scared of you pussies anymore. This is a president who gets bitch slapped by his own citizens. But this concert hall attack is undoubtedly going to see some kind of retaliation by the Russians. Whether or not it's the grand major retaliation that gives NATO a further excuse to escalate is what remains to be seen. A major bombing campaign over Ukraine would make a lot of sense, but anybody that would want to expand NATO's involvement in this war would simply have to launch an attack on the US or any other NATO country and just say, oh, this must be the Russian retaliation. Slancha. in this world is my thoughts and my word and I don't break them for no one. You understand? So say goodnight, so say goodnight to the bad guy. So say goodnight, so say goodnight to the bad guy. So say goodnight, so say goodnight to the bad guy.